your turn. Right. I've been told it's uh, okay to go ahead and start, so I will. So I'll say once again, thank you for coming, everybody. Um, in this session, we're going to be talking about tools for teamwork and success. Um, when uh, I decided that me and some people from my team were going to join Jay and Beyond, I quickly submitted four talks that I could think of that maybe I could share my knowledge. And this was probably the one I was le the least prepared for. <laughs> so I've had to uh, spend some time um, uh, putting everything together um, and, and research it. But um, yeah, let's, let's, let's get started. Um, so my name is Soren Beck Jensen. I am the CEO of Jensen Technologies. Um, and yeah, that's my uh, Joomla email addresses there. Let me just get this out of the way. Um, I am a developer, um, first and foremost, I would say, but I'm also a designer and an, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a Joomla enthusiast. I speak and I write about Joomla and I volunteer. I'm currently in the marketing uh, department, marketing team in the resources directory and in the Joomla 4 user experience group and also newly formed, we just launched yesterday, a group at Joomla doing SEO uh, on, on all the Joomla websites. So if you have any questions or want to know more about joining any of these teams, feel free to, to talk to me about that afterwards. <coughs> Jensen Technologies, my company, started in 2005. Uh, we do 100% Joomla development. Um, I have seven employees and we're based here in Spain in Granada. We, do, we have four different business units, not web design, which is our client facing, where we make websites for customers. Uh, we have um, run a site called Automatic Backlinks, which is SEO um, related. Then many, maybe many of you know Component Creator. And we also uh, have a, a translation solution for Joomla called Neno. Um, that is the only solution uh, for translating your Joomla website that can translate any third-party component. And from within it, you can, um, you can order professional translation as well. Um, right, so tools for teamwork and success. There's a couple of things that I want to just uh, start by saying. I'm not an expert on this area. Uh, I just run my own business and have been for many years. And during those years, we have come to rely on, on certain tools and are using them, and I thought I would share this. But it's as much a sharing experience. I like uh, people to, during the session, ask questions, uh, give me comments, tell me which tools you have experience with using, and so on. But let me say, we do have a lot of slides and a lot of tools to go through, so let's try and, and keep it fast-paced. But you're welcome to ask and, and comment during, as we're going on. As I said, there are many, many tools and options available, and the ones that I'm presenting are not necessarily the best. Uh, but they are uh, the ones that we use and that we have chosen to use. Um, and I'm going to skip standard tools like um, which, which IDE you use for development, for instance, or that you use Photoshop for designing and stuff. I'm, it's more going to be collaboration tools and online services that uh, I focus on. And as I said, please share your tools as, as we go along and, and, and feel free to comment. Right, there's four categories uh, that I've divided the tools into. There's collaboration and project management. Uh, then there's design and development. Uh, and uh, after you've kind of launched your site or as you're launching your site, then there's managing your site. And then customer relations tools as well. If we talk about the collaboration and project management tools, then there are primary two primary tools that we use. Um, for that, uh, we try to keep the layer of kind of project management very s simple, so we only use these two tools. Uh, Google Apps, we use for pretty much as much as we can. Um, anybody in here not familiar with Google Apps? I didn't think so. Um, so I'm not going to go through what each of these are, but more say that we use it heavily in our team. We use it for everything. We we, because of the, 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 the way you can collaborate and, and writing documents, even a presentation like this, I've used uh, Google presentations, um, you can collaborate on them, you can share them, you can comment, you know, it's, it's, it's just 
for me, a, a wonderful set of tools and probably the most important tool that we use. But as everybody's familiar with that, I'm not going to dwell too much on it. Unless anybody has any questions to any one of these uh, uh, apps uh, that are here. What do you use forms? Forms, we, it's, it's a good question. Actually, um, I think the next, on Drive, the, the next slide um, shows the same ones, just with some uh, alternatives. And as you can see for forms, the alternative would be SurveyMonkey. So we use it We use it for gathering user data. We just recently had a on component creator ask our users to give us feedback, and we used Google Forms. And, and actually, I found it much better than SurveyMonkey, because uh, the SurveyMonkey has r restrictions um, in, uh, if you use the free plan. So that's what we use it for. But you can use it for lots of different things, really. Any other questions, comments? Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I should go through these, but you can use stuff like Soho and Office uh, 365, and I'm sure some of you uh, are probably using other tools as well. But I think it's important to try and get something that will allow you to collaborate on kind of documentation and communication. And, uh, and, and, and what I find really appealing about Google Apps is that it's all encompassing. Like if I was to use the alternatives, I would have to use lots of different ones. Uh, whereas with Google Apps, I get everything. The problem is getting now, Google Apps cost money if you have a, a new domain. But there is a little trick. There's, uh, you can buy an existing domain that has free Google Apps on it. And, and it, then you get some weird domain that's not yours. But you can add domains to, to that and then make those domains your primary. So if you're interested in getting free Google Apps, the, my recommendation is to buy one of these domains. I think they cost like $80. And then you get a domain that is free for life for, for with Google Apps on it. Because right now, if you want to start a new domain and sign up, you have to pay, I think, $50 per user per year uh, to use Google Apps. But you can buy existing old domains with uh, that has a legacy. Right, so Trello. Can I see a, a hand of people who are not familiar with what Trello is? OK, great. Well, I hope to enlighten you, because this is really a tool that we love using. It is just so intuitive and so easy to use. And in fact, I'm going to play a little video. I can do that, right? Um, that just explains what Trello is. Because they, I, I found this video, and I think they do it much better than, um, than, than I can do. There's sound coming up. Hey, this is Brian from the Trello team. Can you hear? Today, we are going to take a peek at the best app ever board that Misty River Software created to keep track of their new app. As you can see, this board is made up of lists that represent a workflow. Each list has cards on it. A card is a unit that represents a task and can hold a variety of information for that task. I can create a new task for this board by adding a card and adding a title to it. Click the card to open up the card back where you can add more information to it. All aspects of the card can be edited on the card back. For instance, I can change the title of my card to make it a little more informative. I will also add a description to the card to provide more details on what this card is all about. Since this task has a few layers to it, I'll add a checklist to the card to create subtasks or steps. These are each represented as checklist items. I will then add a few members of my team to this card to assign them the task. Since Ben and Julie are fluent in these languages, I will add them. When board members are added to a card, they will receive a notification both within Trello and by email. Since we are on a deadline for this feature, I am going to add a due date to the card so that everyone knows this needs to get done before the beta version <coughs> ships. <coughs> Adding labels to your cards is a great way to add visual information for quick reference. <coughs> Plus, you can filter your board by labels, which I will demonstrate later in the video. Commenting on cards is a convenient way to keep the conversation about a task centrally located. At mention a board member in a comment, and they will receive a notification. Also, since I want to stay on top of the progress of this card, I'm going to subscribe to it. This way, I will receive notifications for any actions that occur on the card. Oh, it looks like I forgot to add an important language for our localization feature. Better add to the card. As a task progresses from start to finish, cards can be moved across lists by clicking and dragging them 
to a different list. Of course, not all lists have to be a part of a workflow. Lists can act as repositories for ideas, documents, and resources. Now we are going to take a look at the board's sidebar. The members section of the sidebar displays all of the board members. The members with a blue icon on their avatar are the board admins, and they can set permissions for the board. I can add new members to my board by clicking the Add Members button and then searching for them by either their username or email address. If I want to add someone to a board that is not a member of Trello, I can enter their email address and an invitation to sign up and collaborate on the board will be sent by email. Also, to make things easier, if your board is a part of an organization, organization members will be suggested as potential board members. It's easy to add members to cards by dragging their avatar from the members section and dropping it onto a card. Next, the activity feed for the board shows all of the actions that have occurred on the board since the board was created. All right, I think I'm going to go ahead Finally, and stop it here. I think you, uh, you should be able to get the idea of <coughs> what uh, Trello uh, is. We use it for absolutely everything when it comes to uh, planning our projects. We lay out uh, a whole Trello board before we get started, and, and in, the way you typically use it is, is in, in Scrum, uh, which is a, a kind of a development uh, philosophy, if you want, um, uh, where you kind of have these. Uh, we we don't follow Scrum, so I'm not too familiar with it, but but you have these uh, meetings, maybe once a week, where you kind of figure out what you're going to be working on for that week, and then you have these code sprints where you where you uh, try to complete the, the Trello board that is there and you do it by moving these cards. It, it started with post-it notes on a wall and you'd like move one post-it note from the, from the to-do list to doing and then from doing to done. Uh, and, and Trello is kind of like a, a, a visual uh, application for that. Is there anybody in here that uses Trello on a daily basis? Yeah. I love it. Lots of people, yes. It is, uh, for me, a very fantastic tool and super fast to use. And if you learn a few keyboard shortcuts, it's just, it's just fantastic. It's a really well written piece of software, in my opinion. But do you also use it for clients? Uh, we, don't, we don't have client facing, no. Okay. We don't share it with clients. But we use it sometimes uh, if we're working with external people. Uh, I use it. I've, I've, uh, I'm, I'm in charge of a project in Joomla at the moment of redesigning the homepage of Joomla.org. Uh, in fact, I hope to launch the new homepage next week. Um, and for that project's uh, collaboration, we've used Trello as well. And, and some of the other tools that I'm going to show you as well were, was used in that project. Uh, I have to go into present. Why is it not? It is loading. I'm afraid to do that because if I've lost internet connection. question is it's so small I can't see <laughs> the huh yeah I don't normally use Mac Okay, so it downloaded, so we do have internet, so I'm just going to try to You can open Here we go, I think. Sorry about that. Yeah. 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 Right, so uh, alternatives to Trello that, that I know people are using, that we have looked at using and have looked at, uh, used a little bit is, is, is Jira, which is um, uh, Atlassian, I think they're called, the company behind Jira. Has anybody used Jira in here? 
it's, it's more aimed at software development, I would say, and bug tracking and stuff like that, but it is also a project management uh, solution that you can use. Uh, Evernote uh, is one I know is also very popular. It's not one that I'm very familiar with myself. Anybody have experience with that? Yeah. Um, and uh, Slack, I know, is very popular. Um, as is, is, is Glip, but I think Slack has more features related to project management than, than Glip necessarily. Do you know Dapult? Dapult? Dapult. no. It's a, it's a Trello alternative. Uh -huh. It looks very polite. You, you don't know? I don't know. No. I don't know too. No. <laughs> for, for your okay. The question was if I know Dapult, uh, which is a Trello alternative. Um, I'll give it a give it a look over, but we're very happy with Trello. Um, Sorry. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I know you are going over those <coughs> later. There are actually a few alternatives to Trello, which are not really uh, card based like Kanban, but more task manager, which mm -hmm. is as, as I said, there is going to be lots of alternatives to pretty much every tool, I say. Yeah, they are more like, to me, they are more like project management, more than Jira. Yeah. Like yeah. Asana, you know, Asana, uh, yeah. Rap, uh, Rike, and we use productive. Uh, so, those are the tools for As I said, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in hearing what kind of tools you are using as well. Um, and I don't know if everybody heard, but you listed some other tools that are more project management, I think, maybe. No, they are more uh, tasks. And task like task. Like, um, extended to do this, if you will. Mm -hmm. With all the sharing and notification and all that. Except they are not uh, card-based. Uh -huh. So more uh, to some, some tools that are uh, more to-do list oriented, where you can assign. Yeah, but really project management. That's, that's really the alternative to using Canva and We have used those in the past, but I just find the interface so clumsy to work with compared to Trello, which is just so smooth. Depends, I think, on the number of projects. Yes. Because we have like 30 projects at the same time, and if you use Trello, yeah. you never have the one No, you're right, you're right. So what is said here, just to, to get it in the microphone, is that if you, uh, we, we tend to not work on that many projects at one time, but we, we're kind of like 75% focused on working on our own stuff, so that means we're working on three or four websites at one time, and then we might have a couple of clients at the same time. So typically we'll be working on no more than six or seven projects at one time. So for us, Trello is good, but if you're working with lots of customers and have lots of active projects, then uh, it can be, almost more time consuming to maintain a Trello board uh, than to having more like a project oriented tool where it's uh, with to-do lists. Um, so there are uh, other good alternatives for if you have uh, a lot of active projects. Uh, we use or have used uh, in Trello some plugins, uh, I just want to mention Gantify, there's also another I can't remember, but there are uh, Gantt charts plugins that you can plug into Trello, so you can set up and, and, and view a Gantt chart of, of uh, your, your project. Um, if you estimate how long each task is going to take, you can... Uh, if you don't know what a Gantt chart is, then go look it up. It, it'll take too long for me to explain, but it's, it's a way to get a, an overview and to plan your project uh, time-wise. Uh, Sapier is, is like a, an API provider that, that uh, can uh, hook you up with uh, other services. We've used it to to um, hook Trello up with GitHub, so that when we when an issue is created in GitHub, a card is created in Trello, and when we mark that card as done, then the issue is closed in GitHub. And so uh, there's lots of different connections you can you can make uh, that I just wanted to mention. Any questions? Great. Moving on to design and development. I'm going to be talking about these tools, uh, mockups, ShareX, ColorCup, and our own component creator, which I just have to do a little shout out to, because uh, honestly, we do use it a lot. Um, mockups, uh, again, in this world, there is a wealth of alternatives. There are so many and some very good uh, mocking up tools. If you're not familiar with what a mockup tool is, it's just a, a way to quickly 
visualize how a website uh, should look um, without getting too much into the details of it. We have looked at so many different ones and, and have really fallen in love with mockups because we can work on it collaboratively, similar to Google Docs. At the same time, you can work on the same mockup. You can share mockups, and the, their library of tools is just perfect, or of, of, of interface elements that they have is just perfect for us. We don't, we don't like to go into too much detail when we're in this phase of the design, uh, because it can be a trap. You can really end up spending a lot of time on, I don't know, gradients and backgrounds and colors and stuff like that. For us, this is all about laying out how things should be, and, and for that, I really recommend mockups. Um, I'm sure uh, people in here have excellent alternatives. Anybody? Invision Sorry? Invision app. Invision app, yes. Yeah. Uh, and the new one from Adobe is called. Oh, yes. The new one. Uh, uh, News? Yeah, the interaction of satellite, I think. It's coming out in a while. I was announced during the awards in Amsterdam. Yeah. And they are I've, I've heard uh, a lot of good things about both, cool. both of those. Yeah. It's a mix between sketches. The program uh -huh. and prototyping. Uh -huh. So it's excellent because actually you can connect things all together and it's lighter. It's working with based on vectors. So it's going mm. to be light. This is also vector based. Uh, the, the version 2 of, of mock ups is, uh, yeah, all the icons and stuff like that are, are vector based. If you want to make a wireframe, so without this visual uh, distraction, a wireframe.cc. Wireframe.cc is, is another recommendation. And it's balsamic? Balsamic, yes. We've used that as well uh, extensively, but uh, my, my vote still goes to mock-up personally, but it's a personal thing. You have to try different tools and, and see what works for you. Uh, it's just some more. Screen capture, again, there are, I think in our office, because we, when I was doing this presentation, I asked out in, in the office, like, which tools do you use? And I think I got <coughs> six different screen capture tools. <laughs> um, but I, I'm, I'm still sharing the one that I use personally, which is called ShareX. Um, uh, in fact, our lead designer, he, he sent me four different ones that he used, depending on what it, what it is he needs to do. But um, ShareX and many other screen capture tools are really good when you work in a team and you just want to quickly send over uh, typically it's only part of a, of a screen, but it can also be the, the, uh, a screen capture of the whole, but if I just wanted to, for instance, if I wanted to steal that logo image that I have there from their website, then instead of me trying to find out where the image is and stuff, I'll just go in with my screen capture tools, highlight the area I want, and boom, I have an image. I can then choose to upload that to like Imager or, or another image hosting site, uh, or I can choose to save it or just to copy it to my copy-paste buffer and paste it into this presentation as I'm making it. Um, and you can use ShareX also to capture GIFs, so if you're doing something like, look what happens when I click here, this thing hop, pops up and it goes in front of something it shouldn't be going in front of. If I want to describe that as a bug to one of my team members or to a client or something like that, I can uh, capture a GIF of, of what I'm doing on the screen. And it's, again, it's, it, you can do only part of a screen uh, when you do that. So it's a really neat tool, and it is full of configuration options for, for those of, of you who loves to fiddle around with that. You can really set it up to do exactly what you want uh, automatically after each screen. Like <coughs> I've, I've set mine up to, I, I press Control, Print Screen, and then I select an area of the screen, and that area of the screen is then instantly available on Imager, and I can just share the URL with anybody I want. Um, and that's, I'm sure you are, most of you are familiar, but if you're not using this type of software, this is probably one of the ones that I would recommend the most. Give it a try, because until I kind of tried that, I wasted a lot of time on things that I shouldn't have wasted time on. It's so easy to use, and I use it every day, many times. To, to create those uh, GIF, uh, and GIFs, I'm, I'm using uh, uh, Vice. Only create uh, only and screen captures only a shift command. It's only on a Mac. On a Mac, yes. Yeah. There's a couple of things that are built in on the Mac, but uh, still, it's not as, as as good as this because you can, for instance, say as soon as I'm done capturing, then put a watermark on it and upload it to Imager, and you know you can set up oh, all I these. Said it, I said that it will upload to Dropbox. 
Oh, to drop and it. And then, then it. I, 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 I might pop up with the link to share with us. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so it, it <coughs> does work in a similar way. I, as I said, I, I have a Mac, but I don't use it on a daily basis, yeah. only when I travel. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm mostly talking for me personally on Windows. ShareX uh, is, is a great tool. And as I said, there are a world of these tools out there. There's many of them, and most of them are really good. But it, it, for me, it's important to tell you that if you're not using a tool like this, start using it because it will really save a lot of your time. If you, if you communicate with people about design or interface or coding or stuff like that, it's perfect. Any questions? For what platform is this web based? No, that's a, a tool. Uh, I think it is for uh, Windows, Mac, and Linux. Uh, if it isn't, then there are tools for those platforms as well. I use it on Windows. Um, <coughs> and there are similar tools, but I think it, it, it runs on all three platforms. And it's, it just sits down in your um, tray, you know, you don't see it, you press a, a, a keyboard shortcut to, to use it. Color Cup is another little thing that Mac has built in, but I, I just had to bring this up because I've been using this uh, application for 12 years at least, uh, and it hasn't changed in 12 years. Uh, it's just a tiny little tool, but once in a while I still boot it up. I need to get the, the, the hex color or the RGB color for something. I'm looking at a website, I'm looking at an image. Uh, I just need the, a background color for an image I'm making or something like that. And it's just a handy little tool. You get a little drop pin. You can drop it anywhere you want on a website, on your desktop, uh, on a photo inside Photoshop. Well, if you're in Photoshop, you can do the same thing with Photoshop, obviously. But I, it's for me, it's really great, especially when working with CSS. Uh, if you want to pick one color from a website to just quickly prop in another uh, background color or something like that. Any any alternatives? Any questions? To this? Sorry. It, it works with Windows 8. I don't know. I run Windows 7. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, used I would to assume use so. The color but when I change to Windows 8, it's not working. Ah. I, I would assume so. Trying to find an alternative. <coughs> <coughs> Give it a shot. Color pop. I use Pixie for the same purpose. Pixie? Yeah, and it runs in 8.1. Okay, so Pixie is an alternative for Windows 8 that is that that is no. But again, it's a tiny little tool that you know you might not think about or you might not even know about exists. But for me, it's one that saved me time. So I wanted to share it with you. Another tool that saves a lot of time and which we use a lot. And it's not just because it's self-promotion, uh, but uh, obviously Component Creator is the service that we develop and offer. But um, once we kind of, I'm, I've tried to structure this, how you would, we would go through a project, first you do the design phase and stuff, and then we would go in and we would use Component Creator to quickly set up the component we are developing for the website, if we are developing a custom component. Uh, if you want to learn more about uh, Component Creator, you can go next door right now, Carlos Camera is talking about Joomla the world, migrating custom apps into Joomla in room 4, and he's uh, heavily going to be talking about uh, using Component Creator. Carlos is not an employee or anything, he's just a, a fan of Component Creator, like uh, uh, so many are. Uh, uh, and uh, tomorrow, uh, Juan, who is an employee uh, and who does work at Component Creator, is uh, going to be talking about it. Uh, also in room 4, the same time slot as this, from 11 to 12. Um, he's going to teach non-developers how to develop components. So, uh, good luck with that, Juan. Uh, and uh, I just need to say, if, if you are signing up for a premium subscription, you can use the uh, JAB16 as a code um, to get 50% discount on one month premium. Any questions to Component Creator? Okay, moving on to once you have kind of launched your site or as you're in the process of launching your site, uh, there's also a number of useful tools that we use that I wanted to share. <coughs> Oops, these are the tools that uh, we're going to talk about. GitHub, Cloudflare, GG Metrics, LastPass, and then some different uh, backup solutions. Let's get started. GitHub. Who here does not use GitHub? <laughs> okay, let's, it, it's not nice to put your hand up and say you don't. Uh, so let's, who uses GitHub on a daily basis? 
roster of okay. ideas. Okay, so there's a lot of people are familiar with GitHub. Anybody in here does not know what GitHub is? Great. Um, so I just want to raise it up because again, it's one of those tools. In fact, the whole version control for us, I mean, we're a development company first and foremost, but version control is not something we started using until maybe six years ago or five years ago. Uh, and before that, we would just, you know, we would take manual backups and we would just share and who's, are you editing that file and stuff? And people kept telling me, you know, you should really, you should move to version control. You should, you should have, and we started using, finally, we started using Mercurial, um, which is an alternative to Git that is now not as popular as, as it was back then. But um, it was one of those things that I resisted for a long time. And if people in here, are developing or even just sharing code with other people and you're not using version control, do it. It took us a long time, too long to, to start doing it and, and really it saves so much time. It makes me be able to sleep at night because I know that if something goes wrong we can roll back and I can see who, who broke it so I can go kick their ass and uh, you know it, it just is a... Uh, do use it. But that's really all I'm going to say. Alternatives um, that if you're not a fan of GitHub, um, which I would not be able to understand why, except for maybe the price. I mean, we pay for a professional solution. It can get a little bit pricey. They've recently changed their pricing, which is good. But uh, alternatives uh, could be Bitbucket, which we used to use when we were on Mercurial. Uh, Bitbucket is also great. Um, and, and you can also use, just run a local Git repository. You don't have to pay for it. You just store it on your own server, and you just need to make sure that server is then backed up somewhere. Questions? Uh, alternative could be GitLab. Alternative could be GitLab. I keep hearing that name more and more. Yes. I'm not familiar with it. Self-hosted. Self-hosted GitHub. Yeah. Self-hosted GitHub. Yeah. yeah. Ah, right. Yes, that's yeah. correct. So, but that's yeah. a local Git repository. But with with GitLab. It's also a hosted solution. Yeah. It's both hosted and it's all So uh -huh. you buy a server and install Git to offline. Uh -huh. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So it is, it is online, on but, but yeah. on your own server. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it depends. There's three options. So there's one option that's uh, on a free option, but you can still have private uh, hosts So you go to gitlab.com, and it's like GitLab, except it's yeah. not limited. Yeah. And it's not terrible. Yes. So another solution, uh, GitLab. Um, is uh, a cheaper and, and but you can also have it hosted uh, and have unlimited private repositories. Yeah, but the Bitbucket too offers free uh, private repositories. Yes, yeah. there a, a limited number, right? No, I'm not sure. No, 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 no. the number of teammates. Is oh, number of teammates. Yes, because we we were paying at at, at Bitbucket as well. Um, but um, we're very happy using GitHub. I must say, but also because it, it, it once you're on GitHub, you kind of that's where all the cool kids are, including Joomla. <laughs> and, and, and it makes it easy for developers to help contribute with, with the Joomla project, for instance. Uh, if, if we find a bug in Joomla and we know how to fix it, we just jump in and fix it uh, and, and submit that code. Uh, so once you're on GitHub, it, it, as I said, it's what all the cool kids are doing. So um, we like it for that. Cloudflare, who in here is not familiar with Cloudflare? Great. I hope to align your day. Uh, I hope to be able to save you some time and to speed up your websites because I'm a big, big fan of Cloudflare. I know some people are not too happy about Cloudflare because they're getting too popular. You know, um, basically, Cloudflare is a free content delivery network. Uh, so you, 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 instead of pointing <coughs> your domain name directly at your website, you point them to Cloudflare, and so you route all your traffic through Cloudflare. And Cloudflare then routes it to your website. But it will store local copies of your images, of your JavaScript files, of your CSS files on, on servers that are closer to where the user is. So it, it has servers in, in Asia, in Europe, in, in America, in South America, and Africa, and stuff like that. And so if somebody accesses your website from there, they will get local content for, for the static content of your website. Even, even whole pages can be cached in, in, in that uh, way. It also, because I think it's something like 5% of all websites on the internet is rooted through Cloudflare. It might be even higher. So they know so much about traffic. So they know that, hey, this IP address is behaving 
kind of odd. It's coming out of China and it keeps visiting these websites and it keeps posting stuff about Viagra. Maybe we're going to block it and they block it all through everything. So as soon as you install Cloudflare, your traffic will drop with almost 50% is our experience because all the spam bots are simply just taken out of the equation and you get n almost no spam after you use Cloudflare. But also the, the, the traffic drops a lot because all of the images and CSS and JavaScript and all of this stuff is no longer served from your server. You get that served for free uh, by Cloudflare. Um, and it also helps you with a limited amount of um, distributed denial of service attacks. So that's, this is the attacks when, when, when lots of different computers uh, are trying to access the website at the same time with the aim of trying to shut down that website. They, they have um, protection for, for that. And another thing uh, that you just get thrown in is you get easy uh, DNS configuration. It's much easier, at least, than, than where I have my domain name register. Or, or the hosting provider to, to manage your DNS through Cloudflare. It's just so <laughs> to go in and add another, if you need to make a, an SPF record or something like that, it, it's so easy in Cloudflare. Uh, and, and they give you a free uh, HTTPS uh, or an SSL certificate, a self-signed uh, SSL certificate. So all of that is, I just love it, and it's free. The last time I checked, uh, your own certificate was like $200 a month. So yes, you cannot, if you, if you want to use your own HTTPS yeah. certificate, uh, it, it gets costly with Cloudflare. Uh, hmm? yeah, no, I think you can use your own network, so it's free on the basic, I think. Mm. Yeah, you your own self-serve. Self yeah. Obviously, yeah. that's still free Cloudflare, but you still use Cloudflare to validate your server, so it's still more secure. Last time I checked. But obviously, your, your SSL is the same through Cloudflare. But the data is encrypted both ways because the there's called issue with people saying it's not as secure because the SSL is through Cloudflare, so the data can be also over to Cloudflare and not secured uh. through SSL. But if you install, say, let's encrypt on your server, basic SSL, it, you can have it so the data is encrypted always. But also, yeah, it doesn't show the professionalism. Just to get it in the microphone, there's a, the, the discussion is about uh, the level of uh, SSL certificate implementation you can use with Cloudflare. I must admit, it's a little bit out of, uh, I have a guy for that um, who, who handles that and, and uh, I'm not too uh, knowledgeable about that. I just, I just know that all our sites run through Cloudflare and they run HTTPS and there are no warnings or anything like that. So I. I don't know. It might not be secure, but I, I hope it is. And it's certainly enough to fulfill the main reason most people now these days are using HTTPS, and that is to get Google to like your website a little bit more, <laughs> and not really for the security. Any decrease in SEO by using Cloudflare? Because if, obviously, say your server has a different IP address, two Google accounts, and Google tells you to take a slight consideration to where the server is located in regards to the ranking. The question is, is, is there an SEO, um, could there be an SEO issue with running Cloudflare because your server served from their IP address? Um, and the answer is, when it comes to SEO, uh, nobody knows, really. Uh, I, I have not seen any con conclusive evidence of this, and I would find it highly unlikely because so many websites are nowadays using Cloudflare or a similar service. Uh, that if, if that was the case, I would be surprised. And, and, but it doesn't route all the traffic through the Cloudflare server, so they should know where your IP is, and, uh, and, 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 and they should be familiar with you know, these content delivery networks now. Any other questions? I just wanted to comment that uh, I've run all, all of web, all websites for the analytics when we moved the Cloudflare, and I couldn't see any difference okay. in traffic. And if something the speeds up pages, so yeah. that's a uh, more important factor for the <coughs> so we may be securely ready. Yes. Uh, Andres, who's speaking now, is, is uh, works with us, and uh, he's he's our resident uh, SEO expert, and he has a session tomorrow about SEO. So I recommend you go see that. <laughs> <laughs> he's very knowledgeable. <coughs> GT Metrics um, is uh, another service that we use. Uh, it's free. Uh, and it's basically after you launch a website and you put it on Cloudflare or a similar service, then we run it through here to find out how can we speed it up and make it even faster. Uh, I just have to look at the time. 
Okay. Um, it, it runs both PageSpeed and Wideslow, Google PageSpeed and Wideslow. Those are two very used services to try and measure how can you speed up your website. Um, and it generates a report based on both of those and, and some, some own recommendation. And it's, it's basically just a website called GT Metrics. And, and I recommend you run your sites through there to find out how you can speed them up. Um, any comments? Yep. Yeah? I'm using a, a Yellow Lab tools a lot. Yellow Lab tools, yeah. okay. And that's, that's almost uh, the same, not, not the waterfall uh, that actually can get in GT metrics and ping them. Uh, but <coughs> good information about the scoring uh, on, on, on some part of CSS and JavaScript mm -hmm. completion. Okay, so an, an alternative, what, what was it called? Yellow Labs. Yellow Labs. Yellow Labs of tools. There is also a web page Web web page speed test is another alternative. Ah, uh, well, you can test from different uh, specified locations. Yes, there are many tools. There are many tools uh, uh, used that you can use for all of these. Um, I'm going to speed a little bit through because I still have lots of tools and I have like 12 minutes left. So, uh, LastPass. Anybody in here does not use LastPass? Anybody in here think they use something better? One password. One password. <laughs> Great. So I learned something. Uh, we use LastPass, and I think I'm not too happy about it, if I have to be honest. Uh, the fact is, you need to have a password manager, and not like the built-in Chrome thing or something like that. You need to have a password manager of some sort. But because we've been using it for so long, and we have thousands of passwords that we share between us, uh, it's difficult for us to get off. So one pass. One password. One, team password. one password. Yeah. Team functionality on website online. You can share repositories with uh, your employees, and it's really cool. Yeah. It they have a team version. They have a team version that is free. Uh, no. no. But it's the best one for all the devices: Windows, uh, yeah, Mac, Linux. It's a license. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, per person it's or? Very user, but it's, very it's price per user, but it's everybody in here. Yeah. As I'm just saying for the microphone, everybody says it's better. <laughs> so uh, go with LastPass uh, if if uh, you want something free and and it's relatively simple. I don't think the user interface is very good and sharing is kind of clumsy and stuff like that. But um, it sounds to me that one password is a better solution. And and if you're getting started. Uh, and I'm not using one of these, uh, get started, use one of these. It'll, it'll make your life so much easier and more secure. Because once you start using this, you start generating random passwords for every single website you register at. And so if one website gets hacked, they don't get your common password uh, that you've used for the last 200 services you signed up for. Uh, so I really recommend that you use a password sharing tool. Uh, and it sounds like one password is the one to go, um, but you can also check out LastPass. Backups. Uh, I just I looked through all the tools we use, and we use a lot of tools for different types of backups. Obviously, everybody should be familiar with uh, Akiba Backup. <coughs> we use that not actually very much for setting backups, but for like restoring a whole site, for moving a whole site from one website <coughs> to another. Um, but also, also for backups uh, once in a while, but we kind of have more automated backups set, set up on the server and all our sites are checked into Git and stuff like that. So, um, But when whenever we need to kind of restore a full site, move it from one place to another, we often use the Keeper Backup. Uh, Backblaze is, uh, we use that on our central file server uh, where we share all our original Photoshop files and stuff that we get from clients, their photos for the website and stuff like that. We use a, a tool called Backblaze that, <coughs> that just sits on the machine and whenever new files are added to a directory, it just backs it up. You could use something like Dropbox or something like that, a, a similar tool. Although Backblaze is more, it's more real backup as opposed to sync folder synchronization. Uh, CodeGuard uh, we use uh, mainly for database backup, but you can also use it for file backup. 
uh, and it's basically a, on a daily basis or whatever schedule you set, it'll take a backup and it takes incremental backups of your database. So it's, it's done quickly and it also means you can roll back incrementally. Um, and we have used it several times to successfully restore databases that were corrupt or where somebody <coughs> accidentally yeah. run a delete all or something like that. Watchful, uh, maybe, uh, um, and my Joomla, they're very similar services. I wanted to bring them up here because I think they're both excellent. Uh, they, they will, if you start using the service, it will tell you if there are updates to Joomla, if the Joomla site has been hacked, uh, and if there are the components that you're using, extensions you're using, uh, have been updated as well. I'm rushing a little bit because I still have a few things I want to share. Any questions, comments? Great. Customer relations. Uh, quickly talking about ticket system, invoices, CRM and email and Hootsuite. <coughs> so ticket system. Uh, we run uh, a help desk ticket system. I really recommend that you, you, you use that if you have customers that you, you interact with. Um, we use uh, something called Cerberus, which is a terrible piece of software. But again, we've been using it for so long, I will not really recommend it. Uh, it's locally hosted and it's expensive. Um, I would probably recommend taking a look at some of the um, tickets systems that exist for Joomla. Again, it would be very difficult for us now to migrate and it would take a lot of time for us to migrate to another system, but I would probably recommend looking at that. Uh, I found three re really quick. I don't really know them. I think I've used RS Tickets Pro. I think we use that on the resource directory, uh, in Joomla resources directory. I think we use RS Tickets Pro, but that's the only one I have any little, only a little bit of uh, familiarity with. I don't know if anybody has any alternatives or suggestions they can say. I know Sendesk, and I know it's absolutely awesome, and I would love to have it, but it's just too expensive <laughs> for us to run. Um, it's worth it, yeah, yeah. It is very, very cool, yeah. Akiva ticketing system. Akiva ticketing system. Oh, I didn't. Huh? And the injury company. Injury. Intercom. Intercom. Intercom is getting more and more popular, and we're using it. In in intercom we used before, um, but is it really a ticket system? Like it has stuff. Like you, you get a ticket ID and stuff like that? Yeah, it's more focused on the entire relationship with the client. Yeah. So it's both like chat room plus ticketing system and notification of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we used Intercom, but we've... We... Uh, well, again, let me just quickly... I don't think I have a lot of minutes left, right? Um, with invoices, again, we developed our own just because we had so many unique needs and we, we looked at so many different tools and none of them could really fulfill exactly what we needed to do. So we, we development companies, we developed our own, but there are, again, some excellent tools for Joomla, I think, uh, and there are some great online services as well um, that I recommend you give a, a, a look at, but of course invoicing is important and so I wanted to, to add it. Which? Wave apps. Invoice. If you only do basic invoicing. Wave apps? Wave apps. So it's a good online accounting as well. So be it's a good alternative. Yeah. I wanted to just get to this because um, with CRM and email, uh, uh, customer uh, and intercom, uh, IO, very similar services. Customer, well, customer IO is, is more uh, marketing. Uh, emails, automated marketing emails, whereas uh, Intercom has a, a few more features, including kind of like a ticket system, and they're great. HubSpot, if you're uh, not familiar with that, is a uh, similar kind of thing. Infusionsoft, uh, I, see. Um, I know, <laughs> yes, Infusionsoft and HubSpot, they're kind of like the enterprise versions of these uh, systems and can do a lot of things with automatic marketing. And Mautic, which is a, a former Joomla heavy contributor who, who, who has started his own uh, company developing uh, automated uh, marketing software called Mautic. It's open source and can kind of do the same thing as some of these. We personally use customer I.O. because it fulfills the needs we have and it's cheap uh, compared to the other services. No. 
No. You need a CRM. Yes. Actually. Not all of these are CRMs. For instance, customer IO is not yeah, a CRM. I think no, it's not a CRM. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah, none of them are really CRMs. Well, maybe Mautic. No. 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 It's all marketing. Yeah, I, I should really have called this automated automated marketing uh, instead of CRM. Yeah, having a CRM is a good idea. Uh, we don't really, because uh, we, we, we don't have that many, or we have too many clients. Most of our clients are like, like on component grader. We have 50,000 users. We couldn't uh, store that in a CRM. Uh, Hootsuite we use a lot. Uh, Andres has left, but uh, he could tell you all day about how he uses Hootsuite. Um, it's a central place for updating social media, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, LinkedIn, Instagram. You can schedule your posts, you can share tasks with team, you can, you can get one person to write the tweet and then it gets approved by somebody else uh, and post it. And you can, it's just a great tool for managing all of your uh, social media. Anybody in here use Hootsuite? Anybody in here does not use something to manage their social media accounts? They, you, you, so you go directly to Twitter, directly to Facebook. I recommend giving this a try. Um, you can save a lot of time, even if it's just you. Uh, often you want to post the same thing on both Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, for instance, or Google+. Those four, typically you want to post more or less the same thing. You sign up your accounts there, you write one post, you click post, and it's out on all four networks. Uh, it just saves you a lot of time and, 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 and you can schedule as well, which I think is nice. Any recommendations in this sphere by anybody else? I only use Twitter feed like it's going to the RSS feeds and put it on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. right, okay. The other Somebody <coughs> said the other, big, the other big one is Buffer. Buffer? Yeah. Yes. And have you experienced with Hootsuite? Have you chosen Buffer over Hootsuite? Uh, well, we've, uh, uh, we've read about both of them and we went with Buffer, so I don't have experience with using Hootsuite, but it seems that Buffer. I don't have experience with Buffer, uh, so uh, I, c I couldn't compare the two, but definitely I would rec recommend using something of this sort. Uh, and that's it. Uh, there's, uh, at the end of the slide I will publish these on, on SlideShare at some point. And there's uh, links to a lot of these services. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time and thank you for sharing your tools as well.